No, no drug, no drugs, no alcohol, no well, you tobacco, drink a little wine, though, and right? no fat pussy. I'm telling you, that None? shit will kill you. No fat pussy? No. no. Not even a little? I'm allergic. <laughs> I'm a big fan for those who want, but no. I, um, don't you drink a little wine, though? I do drink a little wine, but I don't think that qualifies as a drinker. Right. You're and just my, having my, a glass of wine with, with a meal. My sons and my daughters, my brothers and sisters, they Thanksgiving dinner, beer. Beer is better than Coke. Right vastly sure it's when you start to enter the drool zone that yeah. i have a big problem of and, course and all of a sudden if there's a problem i can't rely on you anymore right, right. i want to be reliable yeah and that's why i have a problem with comfortably numb yeah i think in my experience you can't wake up the bass player because he's comfortably numb. The guys don't show up. He can't tune his guitar. He forgot the licks. We're not as tight as we could be. You're fired. Right. And I know what you're saying, but this is what I'm saying to you is that this is just a discipline issue. And it's not the marijuana or anything that gets people like that. It's a lack of discipline. I, I come you from the jiu-jitsu you... world. And the jiu-jitsu world is filled with people that smoke pot. And these motherfuckers work hard. Uh, but uh, they want... What's the number one karate guy who... Was... The, the guy that died. Bruce Lee? Yeah, Bruce Lee. Okay. Did he smoke dope? Uh, he ate hash. He ate hash? Yeah, yeah, he was into eating uh, hash. Here's my question but to you. But that's not what killed him. Here's, here's my question to you, as I offered to my son Rocco, uh -huh. because he's an advocate. Of marijuana? Yes. Okay. And I said, All right, Rocco. And I said, and I said <laughs> so do you really believe that perfectly clean and sober, Mm-hmm. Taking care of your health with a conscientious diet, good athletic workout discipline, physical prowess. Mm -hmm. Do you really think that an outside source, peyote, mushrooms, dope, whatever you want to call it. Do you really think that with that outside influence... You can do something you can't do unto your God-given gift individual self? I'm convinced, Joe, that you will be the absolute best you can be. You will accomplish what I think is a self-inflicted curse of modern man that 90%, 98% of humanity might be tapping into 5% of their capabilities because they get on a treadmill, they get in a, a, a paradigm, self-restricted paradigm, mm -hmm. ever so decreasing uh, view of the world and experiences and the, over ro the destroyed road over-traveled versus not only the road, the less traveled, but the non-road untraveled. That's my favorite. I'm convinced that you, Joe Rogan, mm. will find your superior definitive best without any outside influence. I believe you have the power. I think I have the power when I get on stage tonight. And you got to come, you got to come witness this. What my band and I do. We'll it's work like something out. We'll figure orgy. out a time. I can't come tonight, it's unfortunately. Like I got to orgy show of, at the improv. Of human fire. Mm. We put our fists together and chant James Brown and Wilson Pickett and Funk Brothers. And it's like the last wolves on an island, gnashing of teeth over the last bone and shard of flesh. It's, it's, a, it's an out of body soaring above life itself experience that we have in us i don't need anything i understand it's that. in me i understand that but you don't use anything so you're you're talking from a place of non-experience when it comes to marijuana or mushrooms or any of these things but my 70 years i'd say at least 55 of those years from the beatniks to the hippies to the mm -hmm. to the friends and you got to meet this wayne kramer guy mc5 guitars new book the hard stuff he and i were born the same time same influence as detroit the swamps the outdoors but bo diddley chuck berry motown james brown he started smoking dope i didn't and he's a and he, and he got heroin and the crack and any prison I get and it. stealing I get it. and and arrested and i'm having the time of my life and he's like wallowing in a cesspool of dog shit and i'm not knocking wayne i'm saying that he was courageous to write this book it's a brilliant book you got to have them on. You're going to read it. You're going to you're going to be consumed by his conversational writing of the MC5's uh, uh, ascension to the most authoritative powerhouse music I've ever witnessed in my life. 
to a bunch of dirt bags on the downward spiral because of drugs and alcohol. I know that happens. It definitely happens, but it happens with everything. It happens with people with they eat too much food. It happens with people with gambling. It happens with a sure. bunch of different things. But I think it's because of discipline. It's because they don't have a clear path. I think it's because they let themselves become self indulgent and they let themselves be weak. What I'm saying is that I know a lot of people who use whether it's psychedelics or they use marijuana and they use it to enhance their perspective. It doesn't become the primary focus of their life. It doesn't consume their life. They don't allow it to consume their life. There's a whole other world of disciplined marijuana enthusiasts, and they're, they're confused the same way people confuse hunters. The same way people think of hunters as being lazy, drunken slobs who are cruel to animals, and you and I know that that's not the case at all. Rare. Some Very of the rare. most disciplined, focused, and- Best in, people in the world. Intense people, yes. because yeah. to, be, to be a Cameron Haynes, to be a John Dudley, you have to be a superior type of human being. Super you have, athletes, yeah. You have to be able to execute in that extreme moment that moment where that animal walks out into that shooting window and you're looking at this 390 bull elk and God it's screaming <laughs> screaming it's and overwhelming all over itself overwhelming and it's 40 yards away and you're centering that pin it takes magic a yeah. powerful human being to execute yep. that shot and i don't think most people are aware of that most people don't know in the same way that that's misunderstood i think marijuana is misunderstood because there's a lot of dummies in this world if you get a group of 100 people what are the odds that one of them is going to be a dummy fucking 100 percent. yeah right more 100%. than one nowadays more than one yeah well if you get a group of 100 people that use marijuana the one loud fucking stupid one defies or defines rather what marijuana users are you see that fucking idiot who's pissing all over himself and falling down so high he can't walk that's what you think of you don't think of the brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt that smokes pot and then goes out and strangles 50 people in in class you don't think of people that take yoga class i like to high strangle. marijuana strangling there should I be a song. Hole. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, a lot of people. Well, I, that song. I'm, I'm absorbing, absorbing, and respecting and considering your words. It can get away from you. Yeah, it can get away that's from you. All I've ever but seen. But everything can get away from you. That's all I've ever but, seen. But I think it's because these people that consume it, they don't have those other qualities. They don't have discipline and focus. They don't have respect for their body. See, the thing with, the, especially in the jiu-jitsu community, it's super common. Marijuana is really? really, really, really common. Yeah, I mean, they, they, there's a show called High Rollers, where these guys, they put together a jiu-jitsu tournament, and everybody had to get high before they rolled. And you're talking like elite, world-class Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts competing high on marijuana. And that's got to be one of the highest forms of discipline very, available to yes, us. Yes, it's a very, very difficult thing Right there with the Cameron with Hames mountain body. climbing, bow yeah. hunting, calling an elk in your lap. Yeah. It's, well, you're, you're, you're doing an art that's designed to break bodies. And the two of you are going to do it together, and the whole idea is that you're going to get someone into a position where they have to tap, or they're going to get their arm snapped, or they're going to get choked unconscious. It's an intense, extremely difficult pursuit, and a lot of people do it under the influence of marijuana. Do you know any of these master jujitsu martial artists oh, yeah. that, that don't do any? Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And yeah. how do they perform? They perform well, do very well. There's let's look, there's elite world class athletes in jujitsu that don't do smoke you know, marijuana. Do you know if the world champion got high or not? <laughs> well, I know a lot of <laughs> you them. You know do. where I'm going with I this. I do, but I know a lot of them do. A lot of world champions do. I know a lot of like real multiple time world champions that, that, that are marijuana that users. Yeah. How about world champions that don't get high? There's a lot of those too. Okay. See, the, what happens with marijuana is this increased sensitivity that a lot of people talk about and they, talk, they call it paranoia. Because there's a lot of things that people put blinders on in their life. A lot of people aren't aware. And I'm sure because of your hunting, you're spending time in the woods, you're soaking in all the variables, the sound, the wind. I'm a radar. You're there, right? Yeah. You're aware. There's a lot of people that go through life like this. No they kidding. go through life like they're looking through a toilet paper roll. They're in the left lane yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah they're, not, they're not using their blinkers. Yeah. And those people, th th those people, when they smoke marijuana, they freak out. They get paranoid. Because what's happening is the marijuana increases your sensitivity and makes you aware of all these variables and a lot of people consider that paranoia you start freaking out about all these variables you start thinking about your mortality and instead of embracing this time as a magical moment instead of being in this moment you just start getting overwhelmed and you feel your own heartbeat and you start freaking I out i feel this all the time yeah it's <laughs> without anything it's an entheogen it brings you closer to whatever you are when you're not encumbered by your ego i will 
ex- admit it's inescapable that everything affects everyone differently. Yes. But once you make it widespread, I mean, I've studied the results of legalization for recreational use in Colorado and how the highway fatalities and accidents have increased. But you know what else has increased? The population in proportion to so the So it causes accidents. breeding? It causes more people there. More people are there. So you're having more accidents there. Right. The problem is there's a, a boom of population. Also a boom in the economy, a boom in the real estate. The real estate's taking off. Yeah, there's a lot of losers there, too. There's a lot of hacky sack playing dirty, stinky hippies that are wandering around with no shoes on. You're going to get those. You're going to get those. You know, if you have a, an opening, welcome society that's, that doesn't lock those people up, you're going to have those. Oh, it's a part of freedom. Yeah, yeah it sucks. Lo- look, losers are a part of this safe world that our kids are allowed to w- wander through. We want the world to be safe, so sometimes things are too safe. You nerf the edges, and you get a bunch of people that are used to hitting their heads on things, and they're not worried about it. Sure. You're, you're going to have these losers, but it doesn't mean that everybody who does it's a loser. I know a lot of like CEOs of big corporations that have so extreme r- responsibility. <laughs> Abilities, and they like to yeah. smoke a little pot. I get I get um, punched back often on Facebook. I'm a successful guy. I run my family. I'm a good dad. I'm a good hunter, and I'm a I'm a Trump supporter, and I get high. <laughs> so, yeah, so I go, well, God bless you. Just I don't want you, you know, babysitting it's, my kids. Well, you're high, yeah. But it's discipline. Discipline is the thing that fucks people up, and the lack of discipline. The lack of it. Yeah. The lack of discipline. And I think it, that's with everything. It could be with sex. It could be with gambling. It could be with r- extreme risky behaviors. People could just get get real nutty and get carried away with things. And sometimes those things are just a big distraction for the lack of discipline they have in pursuing their own goals in life. I think that that is the real high in life. The real high in life is pursuing difficult things. Gratification. Yes. Yep, getting good absolutely. at them and then a- accomplishing your goals. There's a, there's a high to that that's... You can't find that in pills. It doesn't exist in a needle. That high is a high of discipline and determination and focus and learning. But there's so much weakness out there, especially in a society that's been spoiled for so long. And you get a trophy if you don't even show up. And, yeah. And you can't hurt people's feelings and bully your, get bullied and you cry instead of fighting back. I mean, there's so many manifestations of a cultural deprivation that runs amok in our society that my fear is, and I've studied all these mass shootings. Joe, the Virginia Tech shooter, high. Well, they're Columbine, all. Columbine, high. Yeah, but they're all on SSRIs. They're all on pills and pharmaceuticals. And almost and all of them are on, on the, the Prozac. Mm-hmm. And their, yeah. their, their parents are, all of them. are chemical covering up a kid that shows enthusiasm. Yes, it's called I attention agree. disorder now. I mean, if they had that back when I was growing up, I'd end up playing, I don't know, I'd, I'd end up being Aussie. Um, but the problem is the word drugs. Like you and I are drinking coffee. We're on drugs right now. We're on caffeine. This is a drug. There's some drugs that, if used responsibly, are okay. A glass of wine with dinner is a drug. Understood. It's a mild drug. A little tiny toke ah, yeah. before sex with the missus, that's a little drug. <laughs> it makes you more... I, s- see, I've never smoked because I can't smoke. I, well, when, I get Even it. when I shoot my machine guns, all I do is chew on a Cuban. I don't really smoke it. <laughs> well, you can get 